Welcome to the second video of the ISAC Lab Reinforcement Learning series, where we dive into the workflow for running reinforcement learning environments. In this video, we will explore how to implement core components of Markov decision processes, or in short, MDPs, including actions, observations, rewards, terminations, as well as concepts like curriculum learning and comments. ISAC Lab offers two primary workflows for environment design, the manager-based workflow and the direct workflow. The manager base excels in modularity and scalability, making it ideal for collaborative projects or environments requiring flexible task configurations. The direct workflow focuses on fine-grained control over the environment logic as well as performance. We start with the manager based workflow continuing on the carpool example, while the direct workflow will be covered in the next video. We will take a look at two scripts in this tutorial. First, we will dive into the environment configuration script. This script lays the foundation for our reinforcement learning environment by defining the scene layout, including interactive and static elements, as well as specifying all the components for the markup decision processes. Next, we will look at the environment execution script. This script takes the environment configuration and puts it into action. It initializes the cardboard reinforcement learning environment, runs the simulation, and handles interactions, like resetting environments and stepping through physics updates. At this point, I would like to quickly introduce the ISAC Lab Hub I've created. It's a free resource offering in-depth guides, providing detailed explanations by breaking down nearly every line of code. The Hub is also designed to be a collaborative space where everyone can share and review projects, exchange ideas, and support each other. I've referenced as much as I could with hyperlinks and made sure you can copy the code, of course. The cardboard example that we will explore in this video is already available there, and you can look forward to seeing more complex projects in the future. Okay, now let us continue by taking a look into the environment configuration script. You can find it at this shown path here. We import the necessary modules. We are already familiar with the first three ones covered in the last tutorial. The manager-based reinforcement learning environment configuration is getting imported, which allows us to use all the following manager classes, such as events, observations, rewards, and terminations. We are also already familiar with the interactive scene and the config class, which is a decorator helping with configurations, and also, of course, the cardboard articulation configuration that is pre-configured. The last new one is the Markov Decision Processes module, or MDP, containing specific functions, which we will see in a moment. First, we make use of the interactive scene from the last tutorial. We create non-interactive prims, such as the ground and lights, as well as interactive prims like the cardboard robot. After that, we start to define our MDP settings. These are a bit nested, so I will show where to find these first. Under this shown path, you can find a specific reward function in the reward script. However, most of the functions are actually loaded from the init, which shows us this location. Here, we will find many predefined MDP terms, which we cover now. We start with the action configuration. We utilize the joint effort action configuration function from the MDP action module. We specify the joint from our robot and give it a scale of 100. Usually, when we work with reinforcement learning algorithms like PPO, we have a policy network which basically gives us a normalized range of actions between minus one and one. In our case, we have one action, whereas a negative value applies movement to the left and positive values movements to the right. A scale is applied to induce a force or effort to simulate movements with reasonable forces. I will cover the deep reinforcement learning algorithms and how they are connected to ISAC Lab in future videos more in depth. Next up, we have the observation. This would be the inputs into the algorithm's neural networks, for example, into the policy network. In our case, we want to observe the relative joint position and velocity of all joints. This is done by calling the func method, which searches through all the joints IDs in our robot. It is expected to be in a vector format, that's why we group and concatenate them. Also, we don't want to add noise, so we disable corruption. Now we are coming to the event configuration. Here, we want to reset the position of the card and pole on every reset. A reset can be defined as a certain amount of time that has passed, or the pole falling under a certain degree. In addition to the func method, we select our mode. Here, it's reset. Other modes such as startup or interval are also possible. To randomize the spawns, we add the parameters to not only specify the joint, here the slider to cart, but also to select a positional range to spawn from. We spawn the cart with random positions and velocities, and the same is done for the pole, whereas the revolute joint gets random angular positions and velocities. Afterwards, we define the reward terms. We will set positive rewards to encourage behaviors that lead to achieving the goal, and negative rewards punishing behaviors that lead to poor outcomes or failures. There are many ways to tweak these, however the followings are chosen here. We have an alive reward term with a positive weight of 1. This basically inverts the termination status, so it tracks if the robot is not terminated. 
Terminations could include a past time or joint position limits. Now we will also directly implement a termination term, which implement a negative reward of minus two for terminating, so the agent doesn't only stay alive, but also respects the termination conditions. The next three reward terms are negative rewards, specifically for the cut ball and its joints. The first punishes for any positional deviations from the pole standing upright with a weight of minus one. Here, the squared Euclidean distance is calculated from the target angular position zero, which means upright. The revolute joint is specified between the cut and the pole. The second intends to punish for fast velocities, as these lead to instability. A small punishing weight of minus 0.01 is applied to the prismatic joint. It is calculated using the velocities sum of absolute values. And at last, we punish the pole for fast angular velocities, which also have a low weight of minus 0.005. The choice and distribution of these rewards and weight is a topic itself, and will be explored in future videos. The last MDP term is defined in the termination class. Here, we define a done term, which terminates the episode. An episode is a sequence of interactions between an agent and its environment, beginning at an initial state and ending upon reaching a termination condition. In our case, exceeding the maximum number of steps. Typically after an episode, the accumulated rewards are calculated and used to train the reinforcement learning algorithm. For example, by incorporating them into the loss calculation to optimize its neural network parameters. Additionally, an out-of-bounds termination term is added, which limits the slider to cut joint to a range of minus 3 to 3 meters. Okay, so we wrap up by creating the cardball environment CFG class, which inherits from the manager-based reinforcement learning configuration. It needs the interactive scene that we specified earlier, all the created MDP settings, and finally the render settings, such as decimation, which controls how often the environment renders frames relative to the simulation steps, the episode length, where we set the maximum episode length to 5 seconds, and initial camera position. The simulation time step is set to 120 Hz, and finally the render interval set to the decimation, which is 2. This causes the frames to be rendered at half the rate, so 60 Hz. Now that we have set up the cardboard environment configuration, we take a look at the small execution script. But before, I want to mention that there are two more NDP terms that we could integrate, but did not to keep it simple. The first one is the command manager, which can be used to specify goal-oriented behaviors, such as reaching a target position. And the second is a curriculum manager, which gradually increases the difficulty of the task during the training to scale from simple to more complex environments. Let's take a look at the execution script. We can find the file at this shown path. Inside, we, as usual, launch the app and then import the module. Here, we can see our previously created cardboard environment configuration. Now, we simply define the main function, in which we create a manager-based reinforcement learning environment with our cardboard configuration file. We also allow to set the number of environments as a command line argument. We define a loop with a counter and reset periodically. As we don't use a deep neural net yet, we apply random forces with a rand n like function. This takes in the shape of the actions we apply and creates values sampled from a standard normal distribution. Similar to the OpenAI gymnasium environments, in every step we get our necessary information, such as observation and reward. Okay, now that we have covered all the code, let us have a look at the simulation and at our observations and rewards. As we can see, we have a small joint effort. This will be scaled afterwards. We also have a reward that accumulates over an episode, starting with a value of 1 for being alive and negative rewards for deviations. The observations from all four environments show four values for the position and velocities of both joints. For example, the position of environment 0 for the card and the pole. To wrap up this video, we have learned how to set up the manager-based workflow for reinforcement learning environments. This allows us to apply Markov decision processes and get our data ready for training. If you have found this video helpful, consider subscribing. Also, comment on what you would like to see next.